Morning guys, uh, today we're talking about an incredible little species. Um, not only is it a very highly targeted species, a very nice eating species, but it's also our national fish. So of course we're talking about the Kaoyun, the just Dischus capensis. Now the Kaoyun is an endemic species, which means it only occurs here. Um, you're sort of finding it from southern Angola all the way around to Durban. So that's kind of its, its limited range. It's not found anywhere else in the world. It's only here in southern, southern Africa. So that's why obviously it was chosen as our national fish. It's also got a lot of heritage behind it. I mean, the strand lopers used to catch them. It's just they've got a lot of, it's, it's got a lot of meaning to us. So it's a fish we need to really look after. Um, in terms of what the fish looks like, you've got a sort of an overall grayish black sort of color to it. Um, that fades a bit once it's died, it goes a little bit more silver, but generally it's a grayish, uh, almost like a dirty charcoal hand kind of kind of color. Um, very large tails, they almost oval in shape, and they've got a very, very big tail to them. They're quite flattened, so that helps them when they're feeding in their, their normal terrain. Big tail helps them to swim around, change with the strong currents and everything. Talking about that, where, they, where are you going to find them? Rocky gullies, ledges, areas where there's a lot of water movement. Um, obviously with their tail, that helps them move in those sort of areas and resist the currents and everything. And the body shape being flattened, I means it's not going to get as affected when it gets head on into the current. Oh, and in terms of how you're going to target them, what they're going to eat, that kind of thing, they are, they like feeding off the rocks. So your things like your your worms, wonder worm, that kind of thing that it can pick off the rocks is, is a very good bait for them. Obviously you can't use that in KZN because it's illegal to collect the worms, but down in the Cape and that sort of side, that's one of the better baits, your natural rock baits, that kind of thing. Um, they've also found that a large proportion of their diet is actually made up of mussels. So similar to a lot of the rockfish we get up here, even your stumpies, you'll often find if you gut them that they're absolutely packed full of mussels, the perna perna. Um, and yeah, so that's also a very good bait for them. Adding a little bit of that onto your bait is, uh, is really good. Your size-wise, you're looking at a fish, they get to about, if you guys have watched the previous video on the banded koyun, it's very similar in shape, that's a lot smaller. The normal koyun gets up to about six and a half kilos, so you know, it's a really, really big fish. Now, your males are a lot smaller, about 47 centimeters um, total length, so that's to the, the end of the tail. Um, and your females are going to get are going to be your big girls. Your they get to about 74 centimeters, so that's you know proper proper fish. Especially the strength that they have in that tail and their ability to work in the rocks means you can't target them with the light tackle. You will get the smaller guys out, but your your bigger fish, your three kilos plus, you're going to really really struggle with them. And that's, that's where the guys have gone to using either very thick braid in the rocks or back to mono to, with the, your um, abrasion resistance that you get with the mono as opposed to the, the braid. Now, using braid, if you're going to go thicker, you're going, say, 50 pound braid into, in the rocks, that gives you the advantage of the bite detection because sometimes they can feed very, very shyly, similar to a bronze bream. So that gives you that, that early detection of the bite. Um, also with, with the area, like we've spoken about, there's a lot of water movement, so you need that sensitivity. But, I mean, guys have been catching them with nylon for, for years on machine reels, so there's really nothing wrong with targeting them like that. So, a medium sort of setup, um, slightly thicker line than you would normally in the rocks, and you, you're really good to go for that. Um, they are quite a high priority species in terms of research. They are heavily targeted by all the rock and surf guys. Um, one big benefit is when they brought out the Marine Living Resources Act, they changed it over to a no-sale recreational species, which is a big plus. So now you're only allowed to catch two of them per day, and it's 35 centimeter total length, minimum size. So that plus there's also now a closed season. Well, I so said now it's been for a long time. Your 15th October to the end of February, you're not allowed to catch hoya. So you're not allowed to target them. You're not allowed to keep them. If you do catch one, you can release it. It's not going to be a fine, unlike some other species. Um, and this also, with its movement behaviors, they, they tend to stay in areas. They, they will move out and come back. Your marine protected areas, your MPAs, are proving very, very successful for them. So, Dewerp down in the Cape, 
is a absolutely lovely um, marine protected area and it's really shown a positive effect not only on the Hoyun population within the reserve but also spillage over. So they all breeding happily inside, no one's targeting them. The overflow from that goes outside, so the fishery areas outside of the reserves uh, build up. So that's a really big positive effect. It's called spillover um, of the marine protected areas. So yeah, guys, uh, a little bit of a wordy one, but the Hoyun, lovely, lovely species. As we said, you can eat them, you're allowed to keep two, so like I always say, try and keep what you're only going to eat that night. Don't stockpile, it's absolutely pointless. You just, it, fish is best, nice and fresh. Um, but try and release them. They are our national fish, so we want to try and protect them as much as we can. Um, but yeah, the Hoyo, oh yeah, very strong fish. Definitely one you need to have on your list. And we do get them all the way up to Durban, but they're really scarce at this side. So if you're lucky enough to catch one, take a nice photo, send it to us, and then put it back in the sea for someone else to catch. Cheers.